And we're back, Stripe Show Podcast, on a Tuesday. I'm your host, Travis Tuesday. Thank you for making us part of your day. That's right. It is a Masters Tuesday. We have made it the first major championship of the year. The best players in the world, no matter what tour you play on, PGA Tour, Live, the Asian Tour, DP World Tour. They're going to gather this week, at least uh, the ones that have qualified. That's a whole other discussion with official world golf rankings. But they're there, Gus National. It's in great shape. And guess who else is there? Our man at Read the Line, Keith Stewart, joining us from Butler Cabin or no? Uh, just right next door. Oh, okay. yeah. Butler Garage. It's uh <laughs> how you doing, buddy? Yeah. I was on I was on a show earlier and they were like, Where are you? I said, Do you think they allow betting <laughs> betting talk on Augusta National Grounds? Like what do I look like, Jim Nance? Come on. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you did you did you stay up and watch the uh, NCAA finals last night at uh, uh, nine twenty nine twenty tip? I was up last night um, mm. because I was traveling here, but I was not. Uh, I was listening to the game on the car driving from Atlanta to uh, um, out here to Augusta. Okay. Yeah. So um, you know, hey, kudos to UConn. It's like yeah. Scotty, and they can putt. You know, they're just killing people. So yeah. It's great. They are six, uh, six natties now. And, um, uh, it was fun. You know, look, the, uh, the basketball, it's funny. I was a, I, I love basketball when I was young. I was a, a big basketball player more so than golf. And, and growing up in the Northwest, like we had the, the supersonics and they took that away from us. And, and so I kind of, kind of got away from basketball, you know, and, mm. and then the NBA of course has changed so much in the way that they play. And that's got a bit of a turn off and, yeah. You know, Gonzaga is 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 a you know it's a it's a good program, not a great one because it hasn't won a natty yet. They were close, but um, but this year I found myself for the first time watching more basketball, and I think the reason was Caitlin Clark. I really do. I mean, she drew yeah. me in. I loved watching the women's game. She was just so different and, and unique in the way that she played and her range and and shooting the ball. So I, I really enjoyed the. Um, just the, the college basketball together, both the men's and the women. And I, and I credit Caitlin Clark for uh, drawing me in. I mean, you're one of many. Yeah. She's electric, you know, she is. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of good things going on in women's sports right now. I mean, Nellie just won her fourth tournament in a row. Excuse I know me. Four in a row. And then it. they, yeah. they're off this week, but they go to their first major championship of five for the season, uh, for mm -hmm. the Chevron championship down there in Woodlands, Texas. And, uh, um, by all means, um, I don't know what her number will be when it opens next Monday, but it'll be pretty low. I don't know, I, but I don't know if it'll be uh, four to one. <laughs> well, for those uh, listening, we thank you for being here. Today's podcast brought to you about brought to you by about golf simulators glowing in the backdrop here in the studio. We've been packed um, tons of lessons club fitting with uh, uh, true spec. I actually just shot a, uh, a podcast before we came on air. It was just me. And I went through a bunch of stuff that has been on my mind in the world of instruction. So I just did this big brain dump in um, with instruction on all kinds of patterns and social media dialogue that we've been having. So I'm going to share that tomorrow before the Masters kicks off. Look out for that. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been crazy here. Super excited about uh, golf in general. Uh, when it as it pertains to the amateur game, uh, I know it's been a bit of a downer uh, in the pro game, everything that's going on between PG and tour and live, but we're coming together this week and it's going to be all good vibes, all good vibes for me this week, except for one, which uh, we'll get to here in the show. Um, except for as, one, uh, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a few things that I need to say. Um, and we'll get to that later in the show, but before we get to the masters and all those good vibes, let's, let's go back to Valero real quick. Laro Texas Open. My picks were not good last week. I apologize, folks. I, I, I'm the first to admit when I have a bad week, and last week was not a good week for me. But I, I come out of last week on Sunday, and I find myself really drawn to Akshay Batia. And I have now for a while, and, and we've talked about him, and I've I've touted yeah. him um, in, in, his, in, in his game and his maturity at the age of 22. He gets his second win, and this is a uh, this is a special dude here, guys. This is uh, this is a special young man, you know, out with uh, some of the guys that went to the live in with Ludwig Aberg, Akshay Batia, and others. Two wins at the age of twenty-two. That's uh, that's impressive stuff. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, the first time I ran into um, Akshay was at the 2017 
President's Cup, Junior President's mm-hmm. Cup, mind you. Uh, he was playing at a local New Jersey golf course called Plainfield Country Club. And uh, there was another kid on the team that I was there to see, a uh, family friend of mine. And here's this, you know, left-handed swashbuckling kid that I was like, who is this? Like, what's going on here? I mean, he he's like, you know, the his, his waist was like the circumference of a driver shaft, you know, <laughs> at, at whatever age he was then, 16 or something like that. He's just electric. Um, and, you know, I, I mean... <laughs> He withstood the storm on Sunday. It was pretty unbelievable sweat if you had Akshay in the mid-60s. And uh, kudos to everyone that uh, made it through all of that. And then, um, man, I feel bad for Denny for dumping it in the creek. But you know what? Somebody's got to win. I got a swing up on uh, on video. I did a little breakdown and posted it on my social yesterday. And, you know, Akshay is, is really is an example of how I think the game has been taught for the last 10 years, the modern swing. When you think about the modern swing, you think about – I, I think in my mind, a lot of ways where power and accuracy come together. And what I mean by that is is really how they use their body. And just real quick, when you look at Akshay here, you know that change in knee flex you can see in the second frame there, that window between the knees, big hip turn. Um, that's different than when I got into the industry 20 years ago. You know, it was turn the upper oh, yeah. and resist with the lower. Now, you know, you see these guys, big hip turn. Then you can sit. You go up. Now you can sit. You can squat. You get spacing between your knees. Your upper stays more over your lower. But I think the big league move here is that third frame. You can see the shaft lays down, and he's open in the lower. I mean, his his right hip is looking back at the camera, his rear end. I mean, that is amazing. That is big league material right there. When you can lay the shaft down, kind of get your lower sitting into the ground, turn, and now from there you just zip that torso through. And he does it in spades. And he was he was really, I think, taught at a young age to do that. George Gankis did a really good job with him. He's moved on. Um, his his current coach um, is slipping my mind right now. Own Your Game Golf, I think, is the name of his Instagram handle. Um, so I apologize for that. But he, they've done that. You know, he's 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 done a lot of really good things. And he's a he's a very clean ball striker. Power accuracy he's found some things with that long putter and he's very mature at the end of 22 i'll be honest look when he was 19 turned pro i was like whoa man that was a big statement you know didn't go to college he's i'm a professional golf took a lot of heat for it went to the corn ferry tour his girlfriend at the time was caddying for him like what in the hell is this guy doing this is professional golf get a caddy you know like i i i was a little critical of him and look, he knew what he was doing. He won the corn Ferry tour. He's come out to the PGA tour. He's a young star. He's won twice, you know, all praise to him. Akshay Batia wanted to pay that off. And he admitted about this guy right here. I'm going to play this video before we get to the message. What I say about the video in the past, this is Denny McCarthy right here going through his routine. What are the, what was the word that I used when I was talking to Denny on the podcast? When I watched this, I said, intimidating this dude, he gets it going with his putter and he starts going through his routine like this. It's intimidating. The guy is insanely gifted with the putter. Eight birdies on the back nine on Sunday. Are you kidding me? Even Akshay said I was scared because <laughs> he knows how great of a putter he is. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. I love the transparency there. And he just absolutely threw the kitchen sink at him. And and they go into the playoff and then knocks it in the water. My God, golf is relentless relentless <laughs> and in typical 2024 pga tour um awesomeness <laughs> instead of just throwing a wedge on from 100 yards akshay needs to go get taped up and then hit the shot i mean come on uh, you can't make you can't make this stuff up you can't you really can't eight birdies in the on the back nine you go into the playoff and then you, you you fat your wedge into the water and then before akshay can hit it, he's got to get his his shoulder taped up like because he because he dislocated it fist pumping in it. just can't make it up all right let's move it forward i forgot my green jacket damn it i have a green jacket i was forgot it at home my wife's out of town i've been like absolutely hair on fire getting the kids to work or getting the kids to school i'm trying to get to appointments and i left the green jacket sitting right there on my stairs but that's what they win this week Keith, they win a green jacket, right? And the defending That's champ so brings his back. Yeah, John Rom. He's uh he's got one. Scotty Scheffler's got one. Speeth's got one. Um, there's there's some yeah. others like Rory, and you know, they don't have one. And uh, they want to try to get it this week. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the floor, buddy. You're there. 
Sounds yeah. like uh, from all the players, it sounds like the the course Augusta National is playing pretty firm and fast. There's a little weather coming in. What do you what do you anticipate here in the way this is going to play? Is this going to be firmer and faster maybe than what we've seen in years past? Well, what the jeez, uh, three of the last four have been very wet. You know, 2019 yes. Tiger was wet. Mm-hmm. Um, Scotty's year was a little wet. Last year was very very wet and cold. Um, so at the end of the day, I think that these guys are looking forward, especially the best players in the world. They're looking for this place to be as firm and fast as it can be. Uh, of course that does, uh, help Scheffler out, but, um, as you walk around, there's definitely some bounce to the ground. Uh, there is, I mean, there's just, I mean, this is my sixth or seventh. I, I can't remember event of the year and nothing's had this much electricity and and I've been to WMPO um I've been to the players and the players was a was was a fantastic it was well run it had incredible electricity and everything but it did not have John Rahm it did not have Brooks Kepka you know and I'm not going to belabor that point but we have these four events this year and when we're here there's just a different sort of vibe and of course, this is the most well-run tournament in the world. So you combine those two and it's a tradition unlike any other. Um, I could go on at length about what I've seen and what I feel like is is happening, but um, they have the golf course right where they want it. They're well aware that they're going to get almost an inch of rain in a very small period of time. But I also feel like the ground is so hard from what I've experienced so far that it's much like getting rain in a drought. Like it's just going to run off. And then, mm. you know, maybe if the top gets a little bit gets a little bit soft. I mean, so it makes the course longer. You know, it, it makes yeah. spin control even more important when you're hitting into these greens. And then, you know, the greens are going to be firm because they have sub-air systems. So it, even if the rain ends at noon on Thursday, um, which is what we're looking at right now, like a rain event from like 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Thursday to like noon on Thursday, even, even if that's all we get, by Friday a.m., the place is going to be firm and fast and ready to mm-hmm. roll. And it's and, and the weather looks fantastic for the weekend. And I can't wait for it all to play out. Yeah. What do you, do you get a little goosebumps here when you, when you listen to this? What do you think of when you hear this song? Um, what comes to mind? Ooh. First thing that Freddy. popped into my head right there yeah. was um, Nick Fowler. Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed. No, Nick Faldo. First, at first, when you were playing music, I thought you were going to play like Bonnie Tyler, "Total Eclipse of the Heart." <laughs> but the first thing that I that I think of is Vern Lundquist. Oh God, that's a good one. Yes, yeah, sir. I yeah, I think of Vern. Uh, in your light. Oh man, it's his last one. Vern's last one. I know. Yeah, I love Vern Lundquist. He's been right here in my studio, by the way. He, a uh, big Ooh. Georgia guy, uh, came in and did the Georgia Bulldog podcast with some people that do it in here. He's He is yeah. an A-plus individual. Burn one. Yeah. yeah, Faldo's a good one. I think of Freddie Couples. Um, yeah. I don't go there with Freddie as much because he only won one, and he only yeah. won one major. Oh, you know? know. Augusta to me is, is more like Tiger, Jack, Faldo, Seve, you know, guys like that, Phil. Mm-hmm. Um, the guys that have won multiple ones, and I, was, um, I think of um, I think of Thursday morning Sandy Lyle being like three under through eleven or twelve. Oh, like Sandy stop. Lyle's always no, he's no seriously in the last look. What? I'm serious in the last twelve years, Sandy I know, Lyle's like I'm being three serious under too. through twelve. We're, we're talking about Sandy Thursday Lyle right morning. now. Yeah, that's what I think of. I don't know why. It's just where my mind went. Who cares about Sandy Lyle? Sergio Garcia, he's in the field this week. Patrick Reed, your boy, he's in the field this week. Wait a second. Um, Patrick Reed's not my boy. Stop yourself. Okay. You, you, you're, you're getting a little persickety this morning. It's the 88th All right. Masters. All yeah. right. We don't need to talk about Sandy Lyle. Everyone that's watching this doesn't want to hear about Sandy Lyle. <laughs> or And they know my boy is not Patrick Reed. So let's <laughs> All right. Whatever when I wanna- think of Augusta, when I think of Augusta, let's, let's go here. The obviously firm and fast. I, I want to see firm and fast come the weekend. I really do. And I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna get it there. Um, you know, look, history knowledge we know is is important here. You know, we I just listened to the Tiger and others that have played here had success. The Phil Mickelson, there's a a great social media piece about him talking about the difference between left-handed and right-handed and some of these holes. It's fascinating. Yeah. Um, 
you know, when to be aggressive and when to be conservative. Like you hear that a lot with players that that talk here and, and they know and, and, and they've learned, right, from the mistakes that they've made over the years past. We know that there's so much undulation here. Uh, I've been to Augusta two or three times. You, you really, TV just does not do it justice at all how much up and down this golf course is. Very seldom are you getting a flat lie. So to be able to hit different types of shots off of these uneven lies into what we know are some of the most difficult green complexes. And so you add all this up, you, you start thinking about players, all right, firm and fast. Got a little length here in Augusta. They've added some, number two and others over the years, 13. And, you know, you, you got to have some length. And you probably need to be able to bring it in with some trajectory, right, Keith? I mean, in, with some trajectory to what is probably going to be a pretty firm and fast situation. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, if you, if you talk about the three keys that you need at Augusta National or the three things I'm most focused on, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, we hear so much about trends here and, and so mm -hmm. much like the fill piece was great and everything. But I think it's sometimes like enough already. We know what it takes to win at Augusta National. And everybody, mm -hmm. we, we've had to talk about it so many times over the years. And now we keep increasing coverage. And now we have social media coverage. People keep finding more and more things to kind of dig into. But the fact of the matter is, is that you got to know the golf course, mm -hmm. right? There have been three rookies that have won. Um, rookies lately have been great. Rookies on tour this year have been great. Could this be the year? That's been some of the theme. But when you think about it, three rookies have won. Really, only one rookie's won. That's Fuzzy Zeller in 1979. The other two, one was the first. Everyone in the field was a rookie, Horton Smith. And then the second one was Gene Sarazen in 1935, where probably half the field were rookies, right? So, like, I don't, I don't count those, right? It happened once right. in – you know, the other, what, 86 years or 85 years, whatever the math is on that. So um, you need course experience. And there's that window between like four and eight times where it seems like a lot of the guys get their first one because they've learned the golf course. Um, and we could go on at length about all the stupid trends that everyone loves to mention, but um, those trends are true for a reason. And some of them get way too deep into the weeds. But my point is, is that like you have to learn how to play this place yeah. more so than any other. And for all the things you just spoke about, the second thing you got to do is you got to hit greens and regulation. There's that key number of hitting 50 or more greens and regulation in order to put on a green jacket, right? Well, how do you do that? Well, you have, you know, 73% of your approach shots are coming in from over 150 yards. You got to be a great long iron player. Yes, you have to control trajectory, but I think even more so you have to control spin. Hmm. Because there's a lot of par five short shots coming in, or there's these, you know, um, Shorter par four shots coming in. I mean, yes, I, I I get it. It's super, super long. But the way this place is going to play, these guys are still going to be hitting scoring irons into some of these greens. And you got to be able to control your spin and, and land the ball in the specific places. And then if you don't, you're going to miss a green from time to time. And that's and that's the third major key is that this is the most difficult spot on tour around the green. Yeah. And when it comes right down to it, you, you have to be able to chip off of really, really tight lies. You have to be able to play from these bunkers, which are perfectly placed. And, you know, you start to have to contend with these green complexes and the severity of the slopes and everything, and then the lag putting. So, you know, when you take those three things, course history, greens and regulation, and around the green acumen, that's where my head's at. And, you know, that's, I mean, that's why Scotty Scheffler is the favorite coming in. Yep. He's the best at game planning spots. He, he always misses in the right spot. And he's he's been pretty timely lately with his short game and even with his putting. How much? How much? Let me ask you this before we get to some picks here. How much do you stock do you put into having to score well on these par fives too? Right? Because you got to make some hay there, don't you? I mean, number two, the dog leg left, new tee. Um, they're going to force you to sling it around there. The bunker sounds like it's going to come more into play. Even so, eight. You can kind of reach back and let it go. Just stay stay out of the bunker on the right. Thirteen. You know, one of the most beautiful holes in golf they they lengthen that out a little bit dog leg left and then 15 just a brilliant par five as well how much do you put yeah. into man you got to score on those four and this goes back to that usual conversation we have or like that everyone that's there that we're going to talk about are all good par five scorers okay. so when you break down the field and you look at the last 10 winners um the average gain on the par fives is like three and a half strokes against the field 
well, they're gaining three strokes on the par threes. So those two don't really separate themselves, but they're yeah. gaining triple that nine plus strokes. Those last 10 winners are gaining nine plus strokes on average on the par fours. Now get it. Mm. I get it. There are Keith, there are more par fours. I know that, but you know, the last 10 winners have played the par fours, like an average of three under par, like that's the place where you're really going to separate yourself. And I, and yeah, you know, Rahm and Brooks last year were one and two in par five scoring. I, I understand all of those things. But yeah. when you look at the top five this year, they're all going to be great. They're they're all going to they're all going to survive the par threes. They're going to score on the par fives and they're going to separate themselves on the par fours. And, and that's where I really love to dig into like, OK, how are they going to do that? Um, what types of approach shots and then how are they going to hit those greens in regulation? And when they do miss, I mean, because, you know, getting through holes like 10 and 11 and, and number one and you know, five, I mean, that's what's really going to determine, you know, who's going to win this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well said. That's really well positioned there on, uh, on the course breakdown. And we got a lot of newbies uh, playing here. Some that might, uh, yeah. that, uh, you know, look, Ludwig is getting some, some interest um, from, a, from a number of people. Wyndham Clark here, he's obviously elevated his game. This is the first time that he's played here. Talked about Akshay, and there'll be others that we'll get to. All right, let's get into our first look. I'm going to give you the floor, my man, because I know you got one here. You would, he would not tell me who it is. So, <laughs> get hit the mouse button. I'm clicking on your defending champion, John Rahm. Wow. Okay. Yep. There is no. He's going to be motivated. Is, yep. There's no way that that guy, well, you just said that that's part of it, but he has the history. He is extremely motivated. There's something going on there with Spain and Augusta national. And I, it's true though. Right. Okay. Yeah, so since is. 1980s, since Seve came over, right. Think about this for a second. Cause this is kind of, this is the, this is the stuff that happens yeah. right around Augusta. The, the, the people at all, you know, the trend freaks and everything like, how about this one? All right. Since 1980, 22 winners from the United States. Great. All right. The second country is Spain with six. Wow. And the third is, is England with four. And Faldo has three of those, right? So mm -hmm. six, six Spanish win, wins, six green jackets with four different winners. So when you talk about like what's being passed down from generations, I mean, Spain is not a global golf giant. Right. They always just seem to have one or two good players with every generation, but that's about it. Right. It's pretty unique. And then, I mean, Rom just strokes gain leader there, scoring average leader there, seven times there, five top tens. He's got a green jacket. You know, everyone's going to fight me on Keith. You know, no one's repeated since Tiger, but he did. You know, and so did Nick. So did Jack. And I, and I feel like he's just so motivated right now. Mm hmm. You know, you could hear it in the press conference today and, and you just know that like he, he he did what he did and he's not getting the competitive juices going like he wants over there. And he he has the green jacket. So when you're going to sit in that, maho that beautiful mahogany press room and you're going to ask him questions like, how are you going to beat Scotty? You know what he's thinking on the inside. He's thinking, wait a second, don't I own the jacket? How are they going to beat me? Yeah. And he knows how good he is around there. So. Um, at, at where you can get him at a plus 1300 and there's guys like Rory lower than him. Oh man. I kind of like it. Yeah, I do too. And, and you're not going to get many pushing back. I mean, he's five events on live. It's tough. And the courses they're playing to really get a beat on him. We don't see these guys, um, on the courses that we're used to seeing. And John hasn't been able to defend some of his tournaments. Oh yeah. And so here he is now, uh, coming back to Augusta. Everybody, Scotty, 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 number one player in the world. Scotty's going to win by eight. I saw on Golf Channel yesterday because he's going to putt Stop well it. potentially. Stop it. Best tee to green. Scotty, 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 and John Rom's like, okay, gotcha. Here, here's and another. He really Rom. hasn't look. Here's the thing with Rom too. Rom okay. hasn't like peaked this year either. It's just been kind of steady. Hasn't won one yet and live, but just kind of steady. A lot of good, and so. You could make the argument that he's kind of due to put it all together here, too. I mean, he still leads their tour in birdies, and there's good golfers there, right? Yeah. Everyone's talking about Joaquin Neiman. But one of the things for me 
of why Rom has been so successful at Augusta National is that let's play the comp game for a minute, right? What are some great comps on the PGA Tour for ANGC, right? We'll go with Riviera, Rom, winner. We'll go with Kapalua, Rom, winner. We'll go with, I don't know, Doral, Rom, what was fourth over the weekend? I mean, Doral's a great comp. For, and, and that's why everyone should have been really interested in Live Miami. And if you haven't looked, go back and look at that leaderboard. If you weren't taking Doral seriously, look at the winners over the years when the PJ Tour was there for 50 years. Bubba, Tiger, Phil, Patrick Reed. I mean, the list goes on and on of guys that won at Doral and also won a green jacket. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I, I you got to pay attention to some of those things. If the game suits there, the game suits at Augusta National and vice versa. Um I just I can't cross this guy off the list because it's tough to defend. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's well said. All right. So who you who got? Else we go? Golf needs a great story. Yeah. And I think that story is gonna happen this week. Grand Ooh. slam winner, Mr. Rory McElroy. Rory. Recently, now I've been following Rory and just kind of doing my homework here a little bit, all right? Mm -hmm. And we know Rory's been kind of, you know, a little bit neutral for Rory, just kind of top 20s, you know, as we've seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, his ball striking, his wedge game, and this and that. And so he goes and takes a little trip over to Butch, and Butch has a way with these players. There's no doubt that Butch is the best coach to professional golfers to ever live. There's no doubt. Uh, what he does yeah. is is psychiatrist. What he does is is amazing in getting them to believe in themselves and getting them to feel good about themselves and and getting them to believe that what who they are and what they do is good enough. Right. And it may not be about a position. It may not be about an impact. It may not be about a particular curve or this or that. It's just about you, the person, the professional golfer, who you are, what you do. And yeah. so I think Rory. Um, is benefiting from this. I was very, very encouraged what I saw at Valero, in particularly okay. with his iron game. Um, he's driving the ball like insanely good. Positive 7.4 Valero approach, short game solid, positive two putting. His putting hasn't really been an issue. He's finished second here. He knows how to play Augusta. He almost won it. We get it. It's, 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 none of this is like, none of this is new to Rory. Like, he knows how to play the golf course. He's been there. He's had a chance to win. He gets it. And there's been a lot of pressure. There's no doubt. But what we just talked about coming in, Rory in the Grand Slam, in my mind, is like number four or five down the list. Right? I mean, it's PGA Tour live. It's Scotty Scheffler, number one player in the world. It's the defending champion, John Rum. Tiger's in the field. Phil finished second last year. Oh, and, and by the way, Rory McIlroy um, is going to, has a chance to win the um, Grand Slam. And so uh, I'm, I'm going Rory. I liked what I saw at Valero. I like that he played leading in a little bit under the radar. Hey, this season has made no sense whatsoever. Some of you listening right now and said, Travis, you are insane. That's okay. This pick goes against a little bit of some of the model and things that I've ran in the past. So, Roy McElroy, we need it. Golf needs it. Save the day. Grand Slam. I'll, uh, I got two things. I got two things for you there. One, it'd be a wonderful story, no doubt about it. But, um, first thing is that you're kidding yourself if he's the fifth storyline. He's not. I mean, over on the property, everybody's watching Rory. Everybody. So after Scotty, he's always watching Rory. Rory's Rory's story number two behind Scotty. And then the other thing I'll say is that hey, Rory can score even with his approach struggles. I mean, he led the what is he second behind Sam Ryder in birdies at the players? You know, a very difficult golf course, and he he was scoring. You know, it's just a big miss. You know, it, what's interesting? You bring up the Butch thing. The last time Rory went and saw Butch was the fall of 2020. And he finished fifth at the Masters behind DJ, and everybody finished 10 shots behind DJ in that fall, November Masters, right? The COVID Masters. But, um, you know, who knows? Maybe they had to talk about what happened back that fall, and, you know, Rory puts himself in contention again. It'd be great I for golf. 
I think with Rory, it's just eliminating that one bad round. And and I think like he's going to have his good rounds. Rory's going to have two really exceptional rounds. He's probably going to have a solid third. And then it's that fourth round that he's got to get rid of. And so, you know, I, I don't think it's a lot. You know, I don't think it's a lot worth Rory. I think oh, no. the, I've dug a lot into the technique and um, have had a lot of back and forth with uh, some people that are are in the know with Rory and what he's working on and this and that. But I don't know. I just, I, I think... Um, I think Butch was at the right time. I really do. And, I, and I'm glad that that it happened. And uh, I'm glad that I, I, I know it's not like, hey, I need you to put the club here, here, and here, like, you know, Hovland is always doing and trying to do. But it's it's more about, all right, hey, what's up? You know, tell me, let's, 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 let's talk this through. And let me yeah. build you up in what you do well and how that translates to Augusta. Take some of the pressure off free will it a little bit instead of shooting 74 in that one bad round let's figure out how to shoot 71 and who knows all right enough with that okay. top of the board scheffler of course four to one there's mcelroy rom look shoffle is going to be there i have no doubt xander's going to be there at 14 to one the question is can he get it done late on a sunday which he was there climbing the leaderboard and oops hitting the water on 16 as we saw a few years back kepka has not been playing good golf. Major championship. He has a way of stepping things up. He's played well here in the past. Matsuyama, we know, is going to get um, plenty of play. He's been playing well. So, yeah. interesting top of the board. We we touched on McElroy. We we touched on Rom. For me, the safe play up there would probably be Shafle. I'm not a big Shafle guy in closing, in particular in major championships. But, you know, maybe... Just maybe the chips fall his way. He would be my second at the top of the board. What do you think about Brooks switching putters? Yeah, I thought that was interesting. I really did. Yeah, it went to the mallet, right? Went to the mallet. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like a yeah, mid-sized mallet, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just how about I mean, I, I don't care if it was this, another blade putter, but I mean the fact right. that he changed shape is is even more so, you know, like if if people are gonna jump off of JT because of the caddy announcement yep. last week. Yep. And I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying in general, people are, if that gives people pause, wouldn't it give you a pause with Brooks the, to look at his scores at Doral and then he comes here and he's got a new putter? Yeah, I'm off. Yeah, I'm off on Brooks. Um, I, I don't like what I'm seeing. Pair of 77s to finish at Doral. Uh, new putter just seems, oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not ready for Brooks. I, not to say I won't be come PGA, right? Um, but for right now, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, it's uh it's a really interesting field. I feel like if there was ever going to be a rookie to win, it could be this year. Yeah. It's super set up for Scotty to do well. But you look mm -hmm. at some of these guys. Like a year ago, like Patrick Cantley was like 20 to 1 to win. Now he's like 35. You look at I mean, where is Morikawa? Where is Hovland? I mean, all of these names. I mean, really this the the, the couple guys at the top the five guys at the top, or maybe I'll, I'll include six if you include Hideki. I mean, like after that, you go down in like the 30s and you're like, man, this is like a potpourri of like Wyndham Clark's playing great. And there's no way I would take Cantley in a head to head over him right now, you know, and, you know, Morikawa versus Zalatoris or something like, I mean, geez, oh, flip, you know, like what are these guys? Like, it's, it's amazing that the cliff that these guys have fallen off in their game. And, you know, so many people here on property, um, he's probably story number four behind Liv. So I'm going to go Scotty, Rory, Liv, golfers back, Jordan's story number four at Augusta. Always is, wow. you know. Guy moves the needle here like Tiger does. And it's crazy that, like, we're supposed to believe that because Jordan, like, rolls in and Brooks rolls in, new putter or whatever, 77 over the weekend, is there, like, some magic dust down Magnolia Lane for Spieth? Where do you stand on Spieth this week? I like him. I like him. Just in time. Just in time last week. Driver solid. Iron solid. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden he pulls us back in. I mean, Speed knows how to play here. You know, he can spray it a little off the tee, which his driver has been like he's nuking his driver. Um, positive five with the irons last week. You know, he, look, he, he scares the daylights out of anybody, right? And what he's gonna do, but man, good vibes, good vibes only coming back to Augusta. Uh, I, I've circled Spieth. I've sprinkled him. I've bet him. I like him. All right. I do. So, okay. So you to take Spieth over Hideki, they're right around the same number. 
I mean, I like Hideki too. Like, you, look, I think I think the picture this week with some of the better players feels a little bit clearer than it has in the past. Like we've talked about how every player has had a weakness, right? And it's hard to wrap your mind around a particular player, even back with Scheffler, right? When he was really yeah. struggling with his putter, but dominant tee to green, we've seen the improvement there. And when I say Xander, I say that with the understanding that obviously Scheffler is the guy. Like, we get that. Like, oh, Scheffler yeah, no, no. is, the, I mean, Understood. no, like, yeah. I mean, Scheffler's the dude. If Scheffler yeah, goes out and is, is, is plus two, three with the putter, forget it, the way he hits it. So it's, it's, it's over. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, like, like with that aside, and having some fun with our first look, right? I, I like, I, you know, it feels like the vibe already coming in. All right, um, maybe I'm a homer, and then you go <laughs> back to, yeah, and then you go back to maybe you go back to now. Okay, now we're getting into the board a little bit more and a little bit deeper, and it's like, okay, now I'm going to try to wrap my mind around a guy that just kind of does it all good. Xander does it all good, guys. I mean, he does. He does it all really good. He's in the green. You you can't find a whole lot of red. Now, what Xander doesn't do really good is put it away late on a Sunday. And you know, but, but when you dig so, into the look, numbers, he's not that but, bad on a Sunday. Yeah, but there's it, but my eyes tell me, like when I watch it, I can see the difference. Like Xander's not a killer. It, you know, like he's he's not Brooks. He 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 lacks that. And I think with that said, like the tournament has to fall his way a certain way. And maybe this is the week. I'm going to bet Xander. I am. That's a lot for me to say, you know, because you know me, like I, I'm, I'm off on Xander. And I, like I said, this is not going to be a great year for him. And I think for all intents and purposes, Xander's skill set, he hasn't won yet. It hasn't been, it's been a while. So, but I see, let's spend a little time here on Xander. Okay. Cause I got a couple things I want to say. All uh, right. And you now and just I, real, real quick, go, real quick. You and I, go ahead. Go ahead. Was this was this the thing you wanted to get to that you gave the foreshadowing? No, earlier? it's not. Oh. It's not. It's not. Okay. All right. Go on, Xander. All right. I'm, I just want to I'm, know what I'm waiting for. I think Zan I see a difference with Xander in the press room. I think Xander is starting to figure it out a little bit. And I didn't like the vibes I was getting from Xander over the last two years. I don't think, you know, in, in the media and the way that I think he straddles the line, PJ Tour live. I think his dad and the way he manages Xander gets in the way. We've talked about that. And I think Xander, and I don't know this, but it just feels like, okay, maybe some things are a little bit more at arm's length. I hear a little more humility in Xander's voice. I like what I hear, the, the, the vibes. His game is in place. And yeah, okay. So with that said, can he put it away on a Sunday? I think he can. Yeah, I do. I think he can. He's struggled. We've seen it at times late situationally. The, maybe the stats don't bear it out as much as what my eyes are telling me situationally. Yeah. And so with that said, I'm going to bet Xander at the top of the board with Rory. All right. All right. Now, Hideki. Yeah, absolutely. I like Hideki too. I think Hideki comes in here and has a good putting week. There's no doubt. He's doing all he's doing. A lot of it really good. Those tight little eyes around the green, they don't scare Hideki. That dude can oh, get it up yeah. and down. I mean, he he knows how to hit that shot. He showed it in spades. Um, Number one player on tour around the green, right? Yeah, now. I mean, he, he just, those, those, those shots don't scare him. All right, no. so let's 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 continue down the board because there's this is where this conversation is going to get really interesting. All right, I like speed. You're telling me you don't like speed. I bet speed. All right, I mean, I, um, Ludwig, he's going to win it. You're on him last week. Played well. Uh, he led the field in Valero time. strokes gain T to green, right? So, yep. um, I think, uh, so I do believe a rookie can win this year. I do not believe someone in their first major championship ever feels like a big test at Augusta. Can yeah. win. That to me seems tough. Now, if Ludwig is playing like he's been playing, I think he's a great placement where you're going to get some favorable odds because of the rookie bias. But overall, to ask him to win his first major championship ever at Augusta, tough. Ludwig has shorter odds than Wyndham Clark, Victor Hovland, Patrick, Cham Patrick Cantlay, Bryson DeChambeau, Cameron Smith, Dustin Johnson, Will Zalatoris, and Justin Thomas. Wow. That's some great respect for uh, the young a uh, Oberg. All right. So those names that I just mentioned, this is where this conversation is fascinating, if you ask me. Yeah. And this is what we miss right here. 
the meat and potatoes. We get into guys at 30 to 1, 33, 40 to 1. And I just listed these names. I'm going to say them again, and I want you to drive the ship, all right? Neiman, Clark, Hovland, Cantlay, DeChambeau, Smith, DJ, Willie Z, and I'll stop at JT at 35 to 1. At 40 to 1 in some books for JT. Yeah. Um, well, a big big reason why all these guys aren't in the 30s is because Scotty's in the fours, right? So he he's lengthening everyone while he's getting shorter, right? Um in that range, the uh, the two guys I'm going to bet are Willie Z and Wyndham Clark. Okay. Hmm. Willie Z, for obvious reasons, if we need to explain that, then you haven't been paying attention to his starts there. Um, the guy gains ridiculous strokes, even with the putter, at Augusta National. Mm-hmm. He's played there twice. He's got a second and a sixth. I think last year when he, when he withdrew, this date was always circled on his – calendar as a big comeback spot for him um you know why is why do people like scotty and will zalatoris and tiger play so well at augusta national golf club and the reason being is that because they rack up greens and regulation now this is the most uneven golf course in the world and when you can really strike a golf ball you doesn't matter where the ball sits with relation to your feet you know this You've taught people to do this, and everyone practices on a range where it's flat. Probably more often than not, people practice with a mat. Um, th- these guys flush it so well, that's why they excel at this place. You know, and, and, and I think a big reason, like, when, when you look at somebody like DeChambeau, I think his best start was his first start there. But, like, overall, I, I have this theory, like, with Bryson using single-length irons, doesn't it make it really difficult to play off all of these uneven lies? Not to mention the fact around the green. Right. Doesn't that create more of a challenge? And hey, he's this world class player. He's a U.S. Open champion. He's a major champion. But like just those little kind of like tweaks over 72 holes make it very, very difficult. And then so that's Zalatoris for me. And then Wyndham Clark, I honestly think, has a chance to pull off a green jacket. Wow. Because that's that's a big statement there with Wyndham. Yeah, because I mean, who's. Either he or Scotty or you know or Xander are the three best ball strikers consistently um, on the PGA Tour, and uh, he's already won this year. Uh, he's contended. He's been in big spots, and um, I mean his game is perfectly tailored to this place. I mean the power, and you know the lag putting, the around the green play. Uh, LACC would certainly be a comp course for Augusta National. A lot, a lot of. A lot of crossover there, a lot of correlation, um, and mental strength, you know. And rookies are getting close, man. You know, Sal Torres a second, Sahib yep. ninth, Sam Bennett last year made that run. He fell off the last Blixed. day, but by you know, well, yeah, Jonas Blix. If you want to go there, sure. But like, there's a number of guys that have been teasing the piranha, you know, sticking yep. their finger in that tank, and getting they close. all get bit. Yep. But like, one of them's not going to get bit. And I think mental strength is what it's going to need to do it. And 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 Wyndham has shown that he has it. And that's that's my key for him getting past it. Plus, first of all, the game fits there. But around the rest of you – know, all the other guys around that, man, they've got a lot of question marks. Maybe not Fitzpatrick, but, I mean, you got a who's who of, like, you know, Cantley, oh, Fina, DJ, JT, Cam Smith, Hovland. I mean, all these guys, you know. Missed I mean, like, I feel He's like – missed this. Yep. I mean, if all those guys were sitting in the grill room at Augusta National, I feel like I'd be walking into the cantina scene in Star Wars and be like, what is going on right. in here, boys? Right? That's Explain right. this to me. Cantley's a mess. Um, you know, he just has not – he he has not played good. Uh, you know, Bryson has not voted well here, but Bryson's playing good golf. And uh, Bryson has played very good on Liv. You got to give him his credit. He's four top tens. He looks happy, looks comfortable. Uh, he works with uh, Dana Dahlquist, who is now also officially working with Victor Hovland. Victor Hovland, ladies and gentlemen, has now hired his eighth coach uh, since turning pro. Oh, boy. And so that's, you know, look, I think people are looking at Hovland, and they're probably listening to this pod and saying, what is this guy doing? Now, I love Dana. I mean, I think Dana is a great coach. And I, and I honestly think Dana is, the, is a very good. Uh, it's a good fit. 
It is a good fit. It is a good fit. I sent Dan and I um, exchanged some texts this morning, and I'm not going to tell you what I told him, but I I hope this works out because I think it's a good fit. And so, but Victor, as we've seen, uh, jumps around, and man, I, I it's I don't like that at all. Um, guy won three times last year, won won the tour championship, and since then has fired two different yeah. coaches. And so that just doesn't make any sense to me. But so I think that speaks to a little bit of the fall of Hovland here. His short game now ha has gone the wrong way. He seems to be working on his swing, and that, ugh, I'm out. Yeah. Um, but I do think that's going to be a good fit. Uh, and maybe they, they strike gold here uh, this week. But hopefully that, that'll, have some, that'll have some shelf life to it. Let's let this breathe a little bit, right, yeah. and build some rapport. Um, I think of that list, look, I've spent a lot of time thinking through this portion and i think you know neiman's not he's not front and center but neiman has been the best on live he has a win he's been consistent can he bring it in high enough to some of these shelves that we've talked about i'm not sure but you talked about the runway that you need here to play well this court this is his fourth time and he yep. has steadily gotten better every single time playing here he gets the invite I think Neiman is motivated like Rom. I think Neiman is playing some of the best golf that he's ever played. And so, look, top 20 last last time here. It's easy to just scratch him off, overlook him. I'll take Neiman in that crew. The the I tell you, you, you mentioned Will. Can I can and, I say something about Neiman real quick? No. In the last I don't five want, years, I don't, I don't want you. I don't want you to. I don't want you to to bring me off my high there. Of what I just, I feel good about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Knock it. Go ahead. He has no. He has no career top tens in a major. I know, but this is. It's a different dude right now. It's a different. It's a different guy. It, I think he's. I think he's progressing into now the next level of play with Neiman. I think. Look. Look. I, I think going to live uh, with Neiman. Uh, the Mito Pereiras, the these these kinds of players that those are the kind of guys that get lost in the shuffle, right? Not so much sure. Brooks, yeah. not so that. much Rom, not much, so much Bryson. The wholesale names, it's those kinds of guys that get kind of pushed aside in the in in that. But I do think since Neiman, I do think Neiman has become a better player. Just, at least my eyes are telling me that, and what I've seen. And we don't have a lot of stats from Liv and this and that, but I do watch Liv some, and I think I think Neiman is in a really really good spot right now. And I think ready a young man to take the next step. So in that group, I'm going to sprinkle a little on Neiman. And I think that's probably it for me in that group. I, I really think, you know, Will, I, I want to. I want to on Will. But my God, minus seven with the putter at Houston scares the daylights out of me. But why? It scares the daylights. But wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. You're gonna you're gonna jump on the bandwagon of Joaquin Neiman, who's never had a top ten in a major. Yes. And you and, and you're gonna criticize Will Zalatoris, right? Who's yes. played in ten majors and has six top tens, Travis. Yeah, but this is the first time here. And and like we're, you know, look, I like Will. I do. I just I'm just trying to look at it objectively, you know. And I think I think, you know, live. You have something against Liv. You can go out and go out and come No, out. no, wait, wait a second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just whoa, whoa. kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, you're reading you're reading into that. All right. You just said I, I you just, pick Rom, I just, I'll give you that. You pick Rom. I just stated the uh, the most objective thing I could. Neiman, no, no it, top tens in a major. And he's got twice as many major starts as Will. And Will has six top tens, and he's got two top sixes here. And he's gained with the putter both times. And I know. Augusta's proven that it mitigates great putting because it's so difficult. Hideki, Adam Scott. I mean, we go down the list of people that that weren't great putters and they have had great success year in and year out at Augusta National. So, like, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I mean, I get so that I get that Neiman's playing great golf. Um, I think that's fantastic. But where's where's his course history that pushes you, you know, over the top? You just said five minutes, 10 minutes ago that you got to play Augusta three or four times, and that's when things start to come together for you. And okay. now you're trying to sell me on Wyndham Clark, who's never played here. And this is the fourth time that 
Neiman is going to play here coming off a top 20 last time and playing his best golf. And now he's got that experience playing the yeah. best golf he's ever played. And so I'm going to take the experience of, of, of a uh, Neiman over, over Clark. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you really, you really want to go here. You really yeah. want to go here. You're going no, to take the look. No, wait a no, second. Look, you, make, you make valid points. You make valid points on Will. You know, I love Will, right? And okay. We, so push, you've gone to Clark now. Okay. Right. And you're right. You can, come at me, you can come at me the first time. Okay. But I, I'm sorry. Maybe to late night travel last night, something slipped my mind, but I know that Neiman won at Mayakoba, but um, I'm pretty sure Wyndham Clark has two signature wins. And a U.S. Open. Hey, in the last year, Joaquin won. Correct me if I'm wrong. Joaquin won in Jedi. Joaquin won twice. Okay. Mic drop. Mic drop. Won. Won in Jedi. Yeah, stop. <laughs> you need to walk away from Joaquin right now. You can bet him all you want, but the fact of the matter is, is that you know everyone's hyped up on him, and I, I don't know. I don't know. And if he wins, all right, so look, hey, look, look. I'm wrong. Okay, I'll take Neiman. You can pick Clark or Will Zalatoris. Take one. Which one do you want? Zalatoris. Okay. You owe me a bottle of wine from this last bet. I won that one. One stroke, Hodges. I, I know. know. So you. So yeah. we're gonna double or nothing. Double, double or nothing. Double or nothing. All right. Yeah. I like that. Okay. I, I got Zalatoris' record over Neiman. All right. Got yeah, it. This week. All right. Okay. We're in. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Mark it down. Moving on. Moving yes. on. We got to get to the fifties. We're already at fifty-one minutes. Let's go. Take me there. Take me where you want to go because, you know, I'm not going to go past – I'm not going past 50. So, Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. I got one guy in the mid-50s, and there's a bunch of names up there. I feel like if you want to bet one guy and you think that that guy's Cam Young or Sahith or Max or, you know, you're really happy with I Russell like Henley Gala. fourth place, you know, like th 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 this is all – I mean, yeah. I, I think up to be responsible as a better, I think you could bet one guy up in there to balance out your card because – most people are going to have a teens guy and a twenties guy and maybe a 30 and a 40 wherever they go on their card. And let's be honest, like, no, unless it's Patrick Reed, nobody at 90 to one's winning this thing. So, right. you know, right. like uh, for me in that, in that last range that we think that people could put, actually put on a green jacket. Um, the one that catches my eye the most is Shane Lowry. And it's the trend that catches my eye. And the thing is he's had four straight top 25s there. he, Loves the place. Very, you know, he's got the skill set. He can hit it far. He's a great iron player. He's a very creative short game player. If the weather gets bad on Thursday and if it gets windy on Friday and Saturday, I like his chances there. But in 2022, when he came in third, he had three straight top 20s in Florida. He was runner up at the Honda, which is now the Cognizant. Um, he goes to players, he finishes top 20. He goes to Valspar, finishes top 20. Well, what did he do this year in Florida? Plays three events. He goes fourth at Cognizant. He goes, what, fourth or third at API. And he goes like 13th at the players. So, you know, like he's he's trending coming into this event. And, you know, he's already won a major championship. And I thought he won one of the most pressure-filled major championships being an Irishman in Ireland for the first time in like 50 or 60 years that they played the open championship there. So I feel like he can step up in that range. You know, if it was him and Cam Young in the final group on a Sunday, I feel like Shane's at least been there and could, and could pull it off. Um, so in, in that range, and that'd be the highest I'm going to go Shane Lowry. I, I like, yeah. You know, people are going to, they're going to look over Russell Henley. We, we he's, yeah. he's got a good track record around here. Um, you know, he'll, he'll hang close, um, for a second page fourth of the leaderboard. Slash. Yeah. Fourth. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was fourth. You know, Min Woo's got a top 10 here as well. Then I think his second one, he was yeah, and a miscut too. A miscut in a, in a second. Yeah. Corey Connors plays well here. We know he can get into the top 10. You yeah. start looking at some of these odds, you know, I look, you know, who, who can win? I would, I would probably bet Patrick honestly down here in, in this, oh, yeah. in this range, you know, I would, I would sprinkle a little on Patrick over Corey Connors. I would sprinkle a little on oh, Patrick yeah. over Akshay Batia over Minwoo Lee, um, probably over Russell Henley. Um, Danny McCarthy's in the field, played great last week. He's uh where is he at? He's at 90 to one. There's Fowler at a hundred. And then we get into two names that uh, have won here. Sergio Garcia and Tiger Woods. There's Tiger. 
at a hundred and what is it? 25, 150. Yeah. I think four good rounds for tiger, right? Who, 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 who plays better tiger or Phil? Oh, <laughs> they're like the, if you, if you look across all the boards, um, you, uh, um, they're like, only the only two guys you can get plus money on to make the cut, right? Everybody else because it's such a small field and and they don't give make make or miss the cut to you know Jose Maria Clavo, you know like that sort of thing. So like um, it's so it's tough for me there. And when I did the golf digest rankings, is like they both have the same floor and they both have basically the same ceiling in my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get that Phil was second there last year, but I think they both make the cut and I think they both would be in a good position. You know, I think from our perspective, if they finish top 40, that they, they've done a good job yeah. um, at this stage in their careers. So, I mean, Tiger hasn't played four, a four round tournament since the 2023 Genesis. Right. I know, so I know. just, just, just play four rounds, come off the course of fourth round and you're still feeling yeah. good about it, your body, et cetera. I mean, that's what we're I at. mean, what's he, he's, he's in position to break couples and players record for the most cuts in a row. Yeah. Right. Yep. So like. You know, that'll be motivating him or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about he didn't play players, so maybe he's not as healthy as we think he is and blah, blah, blah. And like, I was like, when did Tiger ever do what we wanted him to do? Like, yeah. never, right? So I, I don't I don't put a lot of stock into that. But, um, uh, geez, I mean, I, I'm more of a Tiger fan than a Phil fan. So if you, you made me gun to my head, answer that question, I say Tiger. But I, I think their floor and their ceiling are the same thing this year. And just, you know, enjoy Tuesday's dinner. You know, we talked about Neiman and he's progressing and getting in uh, yep. with his game and playing great golf. I, the, I'll finish with this um, as we get down to the, uh, I think the last one I would, I'm going to bet is the Gala. You know, I think he's, yeah. he is, uh, he is really elevating his game. He is a guy that I think we're going to start seeing contend. Um, I like his game here at Augusta. He was ninth here last year. We saw him at the players top 10 Arnold Palmer before that he was six, which is a great field. Um, kind of lost his uh, putter a little bit at Houston where he was 28th. But uh, I tell you, his, his driver, a tremendous growth here with the driver. Look, I, Sahith oh, Thagala, yeah. Sahith Thagala here, folks, um, is driving the ball as as well as I've seen him. And oh, yeah. his iron game, his iron game, trending nicely. I don't worry about a short game in putting. And, and I think that's been a little off there at Houston, which I'm going to look past. I, I, I'll, I'll finish the show with a, a bit of a long shot in Thagala to put on a green jacket. How cool would that be? How be cool great. would that be? He's not going to do it because Rory's going to get it. But outside of that, <laughs> I want Sahith to win. <laughs> All right. You, you've been like, you're like a Fox reality TV show. You've been talking about this <laughs> thing the whole time. You're going to make, you're angry or you're going to make some point about like what you, you haven't spilled the beans oh, no, yet. It's Hovland. You know it's Hovland with me, man. The guy just drives me nuts. Oh. He drives oh, yeah. me nuts. Okay. All this yeah. bouncing around. Like, I just don't get it. World-class player, genius. And it's just. Now, that said, yeah. I'm I'm glad. I hope he settles in with Dana because I think they'd be a really, really good pair. I think they would do some good things together. So I hope that works. I like Dana as a coach. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I wish them both well. I yeah. do. Keith, you are the man. Thank you for taking the time. Um, hey, enjoy Augusta. And, and take some pictures of, you know, Panem- Menno cheese sandwich just sent them over to me. And then I'll text you my address to, to ship those two bottles of wine after uh, on Monday. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, uh, what was it? <laughs> Willie Z and Neiman. All right. Yep. Walking Neiman yeah. over Willie Z. That's yeah. hard for me to say, but I, look, I'm giving, Hey, we gave live a little love. I, I like that. You, you, you know, you, you got on Rom. We talked about Neiman, you know, yeah. look, I think, uh, it all do talked about live respect. Miami and Doral love Miami Jedi. Big tournament. Jetta. Or whatever. Jetta. Oh. All right. Get out hey, of here. Stuart, at Read the Line. Go follow him. I'm going to Magnolia Lane. See ya.